President Donald Trump has said that he will sign an executive order to temporarily some suspend all immigration to the U.S. because of the virus. On Twitter, he cited the attack from the virus and the need to protect the jobs of Americans, but did not give details. It was not clear what programs might be affected and whether the president would be able to carry out the order. Critics say the government is using the pandemic to crack down on immigration. To help us make sense of this, we have Professor Akpan Obong of Arizona State University joining us from the U.S. via Skype. Thank you very much for your time on the news. You're welcome. So could you share with us your thoughts on President Trump's decision to temporarily suspend um, uh, um, immigration to the United States as a result of COVID-19? Well, actually, I think he has uh, signed the executive order, so he has put that on pause. But uh, um, he has also decided not to stop the guest worker program. And which is interesting because it was because of jobs that he decided he was going to put a pause on it. Um, his thinking was that after the pandemic, uh, pandemic um, there will be need for jobs for Americans, and he didn't want foreigners coming in to take scarce jobs. And so it's interesting that at the end of the day, um, he has decided to allow what um, is called guest worker programs, um, meaning that uh, foreigners can still come in as temporary workers. But he's put a pause on immigration, people coming in uh, with green card. So it's, it's kind of uh, confusing what the whole purpose was if um, guest worker program is still on. So what are the people saying about the this decision? I'm sorry, my screen is frozen. Can you still see me? Yes, we can still see you, ma'am. Um, I'm asking, okay. what, what are the yes. people saying about the decision? What, what are they saying? Are they receptive to it? Well, it depends on uh, which people you're talking to. And um, those of us in the immigrant community, of course, we don't like that. Um, personally, for the last three, four years, I've been trying to bring my son out here. And it's been one uh, um, block after the other. So we don't like it. But um, the people for whom he decided to do this are happy. And who are those people? They're basically his, uh, his base. And um, those who have always resisted um, um, foreigners coming into the country. And in situations like this, the president is kind of losing a grip on, on his best. So he had to give them um, a red meat, tell them something that he knows um, they will like. And so he has said it. Again, it's really confusing because uh, when he started talking about this um, two days ago, he said it was to preserve jobs. But it's not clear how he's preserving jobs when at the end of the day, jobs will, people coming into work will still be allowed to come in. Uh, but uh, he has succeeded in doing what he always does to create a distraction. Um, so a lot of people that I knew, um, a lot of people in the immigrant community, a lot of liberals, I'm not happy about that, but a lot of conservative um, Trump, you know, follow. What, 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 are, what are the options for people um, to fight this? Should they choose to go ahead? Do they have any options in the matter? I don't, no, I don't think so. Again, um, certain people, you know, exploit vulnerabilities. A lot of people want to come to the U.S. I don't know why. Um, so, and so. The people who are going to be affected are people who don't have any voices here. Uh, again, my own personal example, I have no voice. Even though I am an American citizen, I have no voice. And so we, um, a lot of people are just going to wait till the next election. Hopefully, um, things will change after the next election. And now here's another um, part of this um, executive order that doesn't make sense. American embassies are 
under lockdown all over the world. So it's not as if people are just lining up at American embassies fighting to come to America during this global lockdown. So this is absolutely um, pointless, him bringing immigration at this point. It's not like Americans are, you know, we are here trying to survive the pandemic. Everybody's at home. I'm working from home. A lot of people have lost jobs. And people are scared about this um, disease. And what people need are... Um, um, people need the ability to test, to go get tested. They need the ability to have ventilators and masks and all of those things if they get sick. Nobody is talking about immigration. But again, like I said, um, this is a red meat that the president uh, knows will get the attention of his support uh, supporters. All right, and let's, I think let's, let's, let's look at attention. All right, let, let's look at um, other issues uh, coming from this pandemic. Uh, what is your response, or rather, should I say, the response in your circles uh, to his controversial plans to reopen the American economy in spite of the alarming casualties uh, from the virus? Well, um, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's a decision that is also uh, dividing the country. Uh, if... I'm sure you're following the news. A lot of Republican states want to reopen the country. A lot of Democratic states say no. And health officials, public health officials, are saying it's too early. And, and uh, they give the example of Sweden that never had a lockdown. But as you may be following the news as well, uh, the, the, the rate of uh, infection has also gone up in Sweden. And so... It's not, it's not something that anybody would want to do now. I'm working from home. I'm kind of isolated at home. I would rather just want to go out. But the problem with this particular um, virus is that it's so invisible. You could have it without even knowing it. And so it's not just about our own personal health, but the health of other people around us. So for him to go back and forth about reopening and locking down and telling the governors that they have the right, the responsibility to determine how what they want to do. And then on the other hand, joining protesters and to shout liberate, you know, you know, liberate the state. Um, so it's um, the I, thing I, that I, has really characterized our response, the American response or the government response to this pandemic is just the, 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 divi the divisions, the divisiveness, and the lack of coherence in how we address this. Different states have different um, 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 policies. There's no national or federal um, um, policy on how to address this, even though the CDC has given guidelines. But those guidelines are not um, enforceable. So different states decide what they want to do. And right now, the Republican states or the so-called red states have decided that um, they don't care. They are going to reopen. Some of the states have started reopening um, like gradually. That's where we are. All right. Thank you very much for your time on the news. We hope to speak to you again um, on more issues. Yep. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.